Hello, everyone. Uh, we today had some very disappointing news that Sarah Jane Baker was found not guilty of, um, well, I'm actually not sure what the exact charge was, which is one reason why uh, we're speaking to Heather right now, who has been at the trial today. Um, let's bring her in very quickly because uh, I'll probably screw up giving the background. Hi, Heather. How's it going? Hi, Graham. I've had better days, I have to say, but oh. um, a bit, little bit disappointing. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday I tweeted something like, um, "Finally, a trans right, a violent trans rights activist might be answerable for their for their actions." But of course, it was not to be. Um, and as we as we found out today, there's actually an investigation going on to two people who uh, were having a conversation in a hostel or something, where one said to the other, uh, "Men are men, are and women are women." And now there's an investigation into that um so yeah um but anyway before i don't want to stun you too much into silence because i want to find out what happened today um uh, I know me. i'm having a wee whiskey no you deserve it you deserve it's it it's a... island Park. it is scotch whiskey no. yeah i think we all could use that right now um can you can you for people who don't uh know the background can you quickly explain uh how the case came about today okay so on the 8th of july there was an event in London called Trans Pride London, I believe it's called, which was a kind of separate, a, a kind of second trans day in, in London. I, I don't know all the names of these uh, groups. And, they, they, you know, we know that through the month of July, there were a whole load of pride events, which are basically trans events now uh, mm. across the country. And... Um, we also had Global Women's Day on the same day. It wasn't chosen purposefully to be the same day, but we thought June June is trans month, so let's have ours after June. Uh, so we chose the 8th of July, not realising that at the same day Trans Pride London were, were um, having their event where they mm. met in Trafalgar Square. And they we had some speeches. There was a small stage, and then I think they, they, there's um, uh, the reckon. I think the Met Police reckon that there was about five thousand people there. Um, Sarah Jane Baker said the, there was about thirty five thousand. I don't know. Um, it seems to me five thousand is probably more reasonable for that uh, event. They left Trafalgar Square, watched along the walked you know along the Mall, uh, ended up at Wellington Arch. Uh, for those that, that don't know, that's that's kind of more Marlborough Arch way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and um, and there were some speeches there also uh, at Wellington Arch. And um, one of those speeches was made by Sarah Jane Baker. It was filmed and put across the internet. And in that speech, um, he uh, was said... Um, I was going to come along and be all light and fluffy and say, be, um, you know, be gay, be queer, be, you know, be happy. Uh, but uh, I've decided, I, you know, obviously I'm not, not the exact words. I don't have the quote in front of me. Um, but no, what I'm saying instead is if you see a turf, punch them in the fucking face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That went, that was put up on the internet. And um, yeah, we all saw it. Yeah. You know, saw it and in fact I the, the network and I um tweeted out a, a message a video message from me saying this is unacceptable we need to do something about it so somebody very quickly complained on this on the same day somebody very quickly put a complaint in that an uh, a, a, a member of the Metropolitan Police at Chang Cross station um closed said there was no case to answer because this was freedom of speech basically again um Summarising that very, very um, loosely, yeah. loosely, um, and so of course that's you know further outrage that the, the police were there when they said this, um, and the, also that the, the, the complaint. This is how they'd reacted to complaint. So there was a number of people I know put in complaints. I was one of them. Put in complaints uh, to the Met Metropolitan Police about this, and about you know I certainly I know my complaint centered on this incitement to violence rather than and, and me being fearful of what caused because i said we were actually there the same day mm -hmm. and we'd actually all end up after the event we'd had which is pouring with rain 
didn't go. <laughs> Was, it was good, but it could have been better. We ended up in a pub in Whitehall, so within a couple of hundred yards of the, the their event taking place. Yeah, within punching distance. Punch, oh, uh, indeed. So, you know, had said that I didn't know that at the time, but having seen that now, I was there. I was in London. This was all around. And, yes, fearful. And I did go around the, the pub getting the, the women supporting Global Women's Days to hide there. You know, because that's often a, in the past that has caused anxiety for bar staff when they make we make them feel unsafe. Um, so you know, cover all that up, especially because there's so many people around supporting transport. Mm -hmm. So a um, uh, couple of days later, I got a call from Metropolitan Police saying, um, "Would I make a statement? Would I be, would I be prepared to um, be in court?" And would I make a statement? And again, I know that they did this. At least, uh, at least two other um, women I know of um, w also had this happen. There may be more. I don't. I don't know. Um, so I did. I made a statement. Made a fuller statement, and um, that was signed off. Off it went, and he was um, up on charges of following that. We learned that he was in charges of um, use of threatening, abusive, insulting words. Um, behavior to cause harassment, alarm, and distress. So it was a, quite a low level a public order offence, apparently, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, fairly low level. Uh, but the, you know, the, the principle was something was now happening about it. Mm -hmm. um, I'd been, uh, we, I, I didn't um, talk with the other witnesses about it. One of the one of the others um, wasn't able to attend in the end because she was going to be on holiday when, when dates were set. So then that just left two of us. So I just made sure for the sake of, you know, not 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 getting anything wrong that we didn't talk to each other. And uh, and we didn't didn't talk about it. It was very careful, um, not wanting to be the cause of any technicalities, um, technical problems with the with with the case. Sure. So um uh, that 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 went on, and then so it, it went up before the court to set the trial date, set the charge, and the charge was on the twenty second. So that was just last week. Was the latest the charge was changed, and it was changed from this low level causing offence to something more serious. And I'll read it out. It was the offence of intentionally encourage assist the commission of a summary offence. Serious under the Serious Crime Act 2007, and that was confirmed on the 22nd. And the CPS informed that the new offence has been preferred, which better suits the facts of the case. Right. So presumably, if this is a more serious charge that was being levelled at him, that would have been harder to prove uh, today, I guess. Well, one would think. Um, actually, I think... Knowing what I know now, I think the, the lower level charge would have been easier to prove. So do you I think this know. might have been deliberate that they changed it? So I, don't, it I don't want to say. I, I don't. I, I have hope from somewhere that, that's, that it's not been deliberate, that actually somebody in the CPS said, we've got this on video. We've got this. He's admitted that he said these were his words. So, um, I, you know, I like to think that we've got some hope in justice, right? In right. the justice system. So, um, so I was set to be a witness at, at, at today, and um, had lots of information from victim support um, and contact. You know, did I need any extra help whatsoever? Yes, uh, yesterday, on my way back from having my holiday in Ireland, in time for the court case, yeah, um, I uh, I got a call from them saying I was no longer required to be a witness. Huh. As was the other um, lady I know that was also a witness. And so I asked why. Well, did it relate to the change in offence? But they, nobody was able to tell me. They just knew that I wasn't required to be a witness. So... So that was, crazy. that was a bit odd. So then we, th then uh, I, I thought, a well, more serious case, a more serious case, but they don't need the two witnesses. Yeah. Wow. That's very weird. Okay. Go on. Sorry. So that's all right. Do ask questions. It gives me a chance to have a sip. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's get, um, let's get I, you loaded. <laughs> 
So I thought, uh, well, I'm already prepared to go up to court. Let's go up anyway. So I did. I met um, one of our uh, other members who was who had been going along anyway to, to support. Mm-hmm. And we went along. Um, it was in the City of London Magistrates Court. And uh, we were to um, a lovely lady from Tribunal of Tweets turned up, although they were still in doubt whether they were allowed to live tweet or not. I don't think that was even confirmed through it, but she's she took notes and I, I think they will be tweeting out something so you'll be able to see the um, the conversations that were had and the, 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 the case. Um, so, but sitting in the kind of, I guess, suppose you'd call it a gallery, it was kind of mm-hmm. three rows of chairs um, amongst, I've never been so close to trans activists, and I'm surprised that they lasted the day because they must have been so fearful with the two of us sitting there, putting them in such danger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, that was fun. And I'm just going to say that in the, in the ante room, it was all closed off and there wasn't a window open. And in the court itself, there was a window open. Thank goodness. That's all I'll say on that matter. Really? Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> um, so it was set to start at 10 and it, well, there were various um, court things happened with the judge doing um, other uh, other um, cases from elsewhere. So it was a bit patchy throughout the morning and they were dealing with the, the morning dealt with the technicality. Now, the technicality was... Interestingly enough, that the pros- uh, the um, defence said that the prosecution hadn't um, um, declared what I can't remember the right word for it. Declared all the information. What was it? Um, no, sure, something, some procedural no. thing about the. Was it a procedural Disclos- thing? About- disclosure. It was disclosure. It was right. disclosure. Okay. And we got to the bottom of this, and what they said was that the the email from the original. Uh, Policeman in Charing Cross who dismissed the um, the complaint wasn't in the pack, the disclosure pack, and it should have been. Mm. And why then? What was the course of uh, what was the discussion that changed it from being dismissed by the Metropolitan Police to being then taken up by the Metropolitan Police? And they wanted to understand what the decision making had been around that. Now it was apparently. The document was in the disclosure pack, but it hadn't been pointed out particularly because the prosecution felt that it wasn't of material evidence in their case. So it was part of the pack, but it didn't have an arrow going, you need to see this because it didn't affect any of the sites. So we spent the morning and the judge ruled that it, there was no material effect. Yeah. So there we go. That was a matter of, but you know, the, I I don't know. Their attempts were there to try and get a technicality. So mm-hmm. came back in um, after lunch, and um, the trial went ahead. It was about forty-five minutes prosecution, about forty-five minutes more than that in defence, and the case was about really it hinged on the intent of Sarah Jane Aker when she uttered the words. When she uttered the words, listen, this is what they they, they used the pronouns in court. Um, yeah. And it was quite Please, of course, Sarah Jane Baker is a man. Yeah. Let's make that clear. Um, so when he said those words, what was his intent? He was in the stand um, and he there was a lot of waffling and um, crowd, you know, playing to the crowd, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, calling, I'm just an idiot. I don't know what I'm saying. Yes, I've got thousands of followers, but it's actually, it's the turfs that follow me. The people that hate me follow me. They are the ones that buy my books. Um, He made some statements, um, quite wrong statements. One sticks in my mind, um, which was that there there was a trans activist beaten up um, by Posey Parker's crowd at one of her um, events in London. There were other equally awful and wrong things said that were not challenged that yeah. we were not challenged at all yeah um and the definition of turf of course um was allowed to to rest although it was accepted the prosecution said this is a slur but this is what it stands for so it means um the judge 
seemed not to know it and, you know, writing it down, but it seemed to be just accepted that that's what, you know, TERFs were extremists. <clears throat> and um, in the end, it hinged on, on his intent, and he said his intent really was just to make the front cover of the Daily Mail. Huh, okay. And at the end of the day, when it came time the judge said that there was a little sliver of doubt over his intent even though he had admitted saying it and you know as, as he said when he was arrested he said don't punch anyone or don't punch tires or don't punch anyone's and the prosecution said if you hadn't intended them to punch them in the first place why did you say don't punch yeah. them in second place um, and it, it, he was he was having a bit of a laugh. The gallery was laughing along, and the judge seemed to be enjoying himself too. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, so the sliver of doubt that he intended anyone to do any harm to anybody by saying those words was such that the judge uh, issued a non not guilty verdict. So so if if uh, a woman if um i i guess if this uh, guy who was arrested for calling uh, patrick harvey a deviant uh said that he was just trying to get on the cover of the daily mail which yeah. he which he had i guess that's a that's now a um a defense he can use. Reason, yes yeah yeah get some bad, let's let's get some bad publicity let's do something shocking and get some bad publicity yeah, yeah. those ramifications of it are that, that somebody could and what we know is that after the after he said those words there was that a woman at the, in Aberdeen uh speaking that was attacked I don't know mm -hmm. if she was punched in the face don't know the details but there was an issue there um yeah. And, uh, you know, and all these things, he, he said he's, you know, being a, a attacked all the time, of course, he does. Nothing was, nothing was, of course, mentioned that he's he's quite known for doing these things. This isn't a one-off. He said things like this. Yeah, that's one thing I was wondering. Was any Were any of his violent threats uh, from previous occasions brought up? No, nothing. Was his association no. with Frida Wallace brought up? No, nothing. That's nothing. crazy. Nothing. You know, I, I, I it was just about you know, and 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 it could have been you in that you know you wouldn't have been you're playing to gallery in the same quite the same way obviously, but it could have been any you know. And, and I understand that that you know you don't say this is the person's character. This is what was a bit he talked about being in prison and how awful it was, and he really didn't want to go back to prison because it was nasty. And, um, well, that brings me to another question. He's on parole. He 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 is in trouble for violating parole, isn't he? Yes, he is, and he's still um, in prison. So he'd let, he left court today. He was taken back to prison. Um, and my understanding is that's a, that's a separate issue because that's one of um, that's for the um, parole board. Basically. I believe it's something like twenty twenty one days. I heard originally, but that must be up by now. I hear I, I I hear different things. I hear different things that they'll be letting him out because they can only keep him in prison for so long. Um, mm -hmm. However, the least what I've heard today, I don't know how. Oh, sorry to call that. I don't know how accurate it is, but uh, that he'll he'll be in in front of some review panel, or parole board, um, in a in a few months' time. Um, oh, this will be considered the fact that he's um, had been charged with this, and so therefore. You know, uh, it's crime adjacent. Are you able to? Are you able to contact the parole board? Well, I don't. I, yes, we can write to the parole board, of course. Um, I, I, I do want. I did try and find out from the legals that were there today what what course of action was there. Was there? A, you know, was a was there a possibility of um, appealing this, or you know, just just what status do I have as one of the original complainants? That mm -hmm. was forward uh, what do we have now um to maybe redress this situation which i i am I'm, i am i'm utterly appalled and gobsmacked i felt sick because it, it was so clear to me however my level of understanding of what this man has done and his history and my knowledge of what he will do and what his supporters will continue to do 
Um, I mean, they don't, I, I, I don't, they don't, there we were in, in, in court. I don't want to say that when we were get when me and my um, companion were trying to get past to get out um, at one stage, I, you know, I, I'm hesitating to say that the legs were stuck out in order to cause us to trip. Yeah, no, of course they were. Because I didn't, didn't film it, but it was fairly obvious. Yeah. Me, me, me with my badge, my companion wearing her suffragette scarf, it was fairly obvious. Uh, but I feel very, very, very let down by um, the judge uh, believing that his intent was to get on the front page of yeah. the day. You know. Even if it was, uh, perhaps it's not a good thing to encourage people to try and get a, uh, some press by encouraging people to hurt women. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, like you know, the fact that they wouldn't let you out of your seats is uh, is entirely uh, uh, in keeping with uh, these spiteful little children. I'm sorry that you had to go through that. Um, uh, it's interesting. There was, there was quite a lot of time he, when he was giving evidence. There's quite a lot of time when he described just how awful we are. Yes, yes, just how awful did. we are to his community that actually just wants to live quietly yeah. and. You know, and do this properly and have discussions, but we don't let that happen because yeah. we are rabid monsters. Because you complain about what uh, people want to punch you. Um, uh, well, uh, I have some information uh, okay. about an associate of Sarah Jane Baker, and I also have um, some proof that, uh, well, in the form of actually a credible death threat uh, sent by an associate. So I might get, I might get in touch with the pro board as well. Um, yeah, uh, Heather. A lot of people today have been referencing that Family Guy joke, uh, where there's a there's a, a, a what looks like a woman at the bar and uh, looking at a phone, and someone says, "Oh, sorry, no porn at the bar," and the person says, "Oh, it's okay. I'm I'm transgender," and the barman says, "Oh, well, in that case, do anything you want all the time." Yeah. Do you think today is a good example of that? Absolutely, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, and I'm really disappointed. That I was, I, I think the, the legal reasons are that my testimony as a witness would be um, would be useful in showing that what he said offended, showing that the words offended and caused fear, but that my testimony wasn't needed because this was about the, his intent. Mm -hmm. So therefore, my testimony didn't impact on his intent. I think it would have been very different had there been a couple of turfs. Don't like to use the word. But, you know, there was no, they were left to declare um, that um, turf to be uh, an awful thing, particularly in London, apparently. So. Well, I'm very sorry, Heather. Uh, I, I, hopefully the story isn't over yet. Hopefully we can do uh, take steps to keep this violent man uh, away from uh, women who are defending their rights. And, um, yeah, I'm sorry you've had such a disappointing day. Well, thanks, Graham. I, I will. Before I leave, I want to end on a, on on a note because what I was getting prepared to go out with after a guilty verdict was the fact that the Metropolitan Police are still significantly letting us down. Now, I know it went to the CPS, and this is not, you know, this is actually what happened today. They had no impact on the outcome of, but they originally said there was no case to answer mm -hmm. after we submitted a few other complaints, maybe some other people looked at it, and they said, yes, there was a case to answer. It went to the CPS and said, the CPS said, there's a case to answer, but actually it's more serious than the one that you've put forward. Yeah. Three things. Yeah. yeah. Met police failing. Not happy with the Met Police. We're going to keep up our pressure on them. We've got something else coming out um, quite soon about Met Police um, we've had we've we've put out already about the trans day of visibility in which they, uh, the the thing about Posey came up that she was made aware of finally um uh, which was that when her name came up in this training session for trans day of vis visibility there was laughter. Um, I from, heard booing. I heard. Bo I think Posey said uh, booing. Booing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and it, you know there was there's a lot more to it than that obviously. So yeah. we brought that out and we're going to keep the pressure on the Met Police because yeah. it's just not good enough. And Rowley may have come out and said some nice words that sound good, but words you can say, actions um, you can't deny. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Well, listen, if there's anything that uh, we can do um, to help, 
uh, let me know and I'll put it in. I'll put any links that we need to put in in the comments underneath this, uh, in the info underneath this video. Okay. Heather, thanks again. Don't thanks, don't Brian. try and save that whiskey. It looks like very good quality whiskey. Don't drink it all tonight. Uh, come, on, for, come on over for me, Jam. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm, I'm stuck in London at the moment. Oh, no, but you are in London. Okay, I'll be right over. I'll be right over. Give me 10 minutes. Okay, listen, right. thanks, Jim. Good no to talk. No worries, Heather. Okay. Good to I talk to you. I feel better having offloaded my... Good, okay. good. I hope so. All right, see you soon. Bye-bye. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, just an impromptu one. Um, might do a few more of these because I've been I've been very busy recently and uh, haven't really had time to do them. So uh, time is freeing up a bit. So yeah, might see you soon for another one of these. Uh, they're fun and they're short and they're easy. Um, but uh, yeah, disappointing day, but lovely to talk to Heather and uh, lovely to see all of you. So thank you. Bye-bye.